Hi, I'm Anna Dezingle. I'm a blogger at babbledabbledo.com, and I'm one of the co-authors of The Bot Book. Now, my co-writer, Anne Carey of Left Brain, Craft Brain, and I decided that one of the things that we really wanted to offer you guys is videos, video tutorials um, talking about some of the different things that you may encounter when you do the projects featured in our book. In today's video, I'm going to be specifically talking to you guys about troubleshooting. So if you've ever worked on electronics projects, either by yourself or with children, you probably already know that troubleshooting is a huge part of the process. Now, it can feel scary when things don't work and when kids are coming to you saying it's not working, but I actually find that this is probably the best part of the process. It's the part where kids are gonna learn the most about electronics and circuits and engineering. All right, let's get started with troubleshooting. So we created a couple resources for you in the bot book that deal with troubleshooting and that will help you as you work on bot projects with your own kids or with a group of kids. So the first resource I want to point out is our troubleshooting page. We also create a bot building checklist which is in the back on page 47. This would be great if you're a teacher and you're working with a group of students because this will help them go through the steps of troubleshooting. But I'm going to walk you guys through this first page right now. So if you've looked at the bot book, you've probably have heard us talk about the fact that bots have three main components, a power source, a motor, and a frame. Primarily when you're troubleshooting bots, you're going to encounter issues when dealing with the power source or the motor. Now, I'm going to start in our troubleshooting tips. We go from easiest to hardest. So basically the main, the, the first thing I always check when somebody says my bot isn't working is, is it turned on? So if you're using a battery pack, you know, sometimes these bots get clouded up with stuff and it can be really easy for somebody to not really be turning it on correctly. So the first thing I always ask kids is, is the motor, is the battery pack actually turning on? Okay, in this case, it is turning on. So that's not our issue. But always start with that. I know it sounds simple, but you believe me, there are plenty of times when somebody just simply hasn't engaged the switch on the battery pack. Okay, if you pass the battery pack turning on, then you test the power source. Now, sometimes you just have old batteries, so you might just want to swap out your batteries for fresh ones. That's a very simple way to test it. And one of the things that I like to do when testing a battery pack to see if the batteries indeed are the problem is I like to use an LED. If you're using an LED, the short leg goes to the negative side, the long leg goes to the positive side, and then I'm going to turn it on again. It's working. Okay, so I know this battery pack and batteries are working, and that's not my issue. All right, so we know that our battery pack is working and that our batteries are fresh and everything's good with the power source. The next thing to move on to when troubleshooting is to look at your connections. Now clearly, once you start making your bod and fiddling with it and decorating it, there's a lot of opportunities for these connections to get loose. I want to show you one way to make sure that you get a, a pretty good connection up front. So when I'm making bots and teaching kids how to make bots, one of the things that I tell them to do to get the best connection, to take your two wires that you're connecting, hold them side by side like this, and then twist them together. Twist those wires together. You may end up twisting one around the other, but that's the best way to get that connection. So twist, 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 bend it in on itself if you need to, and then you take your electrical tape and you really cover that connection tightly. You have to use electrical tape. If you don't, these connections really easily pull apart, even when twisted together. Now I'm going to try this out and turn it on. It's working. So again, I would not have your children assemble a bot until this stage is fully working and functioning. Okay, now if indeed the bot is made, you did reach this stage and now it's suddenly not working, you are going to have to pull connections apart. It's not the end of the world. <laughs> Do it all the time. So then I would take the electrical tape off. 
I would retwist my wires. I first check it, make sure it's working. It is, it's vibrating. So then we're going to put it back onto the bot. So basically, you're sometimes going to have to take those wires apart. Now, on a this type of motor, I wanted to show you guys how you make those connections as well. A lot of these, it doesn't matter which side. There's not a positive and negative side. If you're dealing with some motors that have wires coming out of them, you're going to have to match red to red or bl and black to black. In this case, there's no specific side, so I can do either side. I feed it through. I twist it. Again, I want to get as much metal to metal connection as possible and then I tape it into place. One thing I find is that kids don't always know where to tape it. Um, what you're trying to cover and make secure is the metal to metal connection. So sometimes they, they tape wires to the motor, they're not really sure. So be clear that what you're looking for is the metal to metal connection and for that to be secure. Thread it twist it around itself and then we're going to make sure that those wires will not come apart. Then I'm going to turn it on. It's working! Yay! So now you know that you have a working motor, a working power source. There's one last thing that can happen um, that is preventing a bot from working. This primarily happens on bots that have motors like this. And what it is, is sometimes you just simply have the motor placed in the wrong position and where it is, is preventing it from rotating at all. So in this case, I've made my problem. Basically, you'll see that I've placed the motor a little bit inward of the edge of this lid. And when I turn it on, nothing happens. I can hear the motor, but it's not rotating. So sometimes kids say, oh, it's not working. The issue is not that the motor and the electronics it's not, is not working. It's the fact that the, attached, the, the object that's attached to the rotor is in a position where it is not able to rotate physically. So always double check in that case, if this is the type of bot that you're making, that the rotating element is free to move and that the motor is able to rotate freely. Let's try it again. And there we go. <laughs> and that is your first part of troubleshooting with bots.